uh, more tags, and we're going to talk about more things about tags. So it's all about tags today. And so we're going to look at what we had last time. If you remember, I said last time we hadn't developed a complete web page yet. We developed a sort of a fragment of a web page. So what we're going to do today is we're going to finish up that web page. We're going to put in a few tags that are in, or ought to be, in every web page. They're sort of like the basic shell of a web page that we fill in with the details. Um, we're then going to talk about some rules about tags. And we're then going to talk about what happens if you break the rules. All right? Because it's interesting. It's not necessarily obvious what happens when you break the rules. So we'll, we'll talk about that. So anyhow, here's what we had last time. Now in this class, typically, when I upload an example, I upload it as a zip file. And a lot of times, it's, it's usually good if you upload your stuff as zip files. The reason for that is, um, Later on, when we start having multiple files per web page, when we have the HTML page and we have the CSS document, which we'll talk about in future weeks, and we talk about and when we have images and, and other stuff that goes on a web page, it's not necessarily going to be just one file per web page. There's going to be several files that comprise a web page. Well, you generally want to keep them all together, and you want to upload all of them to me. Because if you don't upload them all to me, I won't be able to see the web page correctly. So you have to upload everything. So it's generally better to put your stuff in a folder, zip up the folder, and then upload the entire folder. The problem is, is then if you go and look at the web page, it won't necessarily look correct unless you then extract the folder. So you can't really look at a web page within a folder. You sort of can. In fact, it's sort of dangerous. We could actually look at the web page we did last time within the zip file, but it's still not a good idea and it's not a habit I want to get into. So when you have a zip file like this, if you're on Windows, you double click it and you click extract. Then click extract all and it will go and you can put it where you want, uh, want it to be and click extract and it will make a folder for you that will contain all the files. So here's the folder that contains all the files. So now we can go into it and double click it and now we can view it. Remember, we, are, we have one file in this example, but we're going to view it two different ways. One thing students sometimes get confused about and, and I can tell by the way they ask me questions in lab, is they'll talk about the notepad file versus the browser file. There's only one file. There's only one file in this web page. Fall.html. All right? We can, however, view that file a couple different ways. It's just like someone could take a photograph of you, someone could take an x-ray of you, right? It's still the same you. It's not like there's two U's, all right? Even though the, the, the image that's produced looks very, very different, right? There's just one that's sort of the inside view of you and one that's sort of the outside view of you. One is sort of what's going on underneath the surface and the one is how the rest of the world sees you. Well, how the rest of the world sees a web page is viewed through the browser. So what you do to view a web page to, uh, via a browser is you double click on it and it will come up in your browser of choice. In this case, it came up in Internet Explorer, but before we did it, it could be in Chrome or whatever. Now, to view it in an editor, which is seeing the inside of it, sort of like the x-ray, we can view it a couple different ways. One way we can do it is we can right mouse on it, and if you have Notepad++, you can click Edit in Notepad++. Also, you can click Open With and choose another app. You could pick Notepad and open it up that way. 
Now we're seeing the inside of the page. We're seeing sort of the guts of the page or the skeleton of the page. All right. And now we can edit it and make changes. And normally what I do is I will keep the file open in an editor and open in the browser and just switch back and forth between them. So like I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say open or edit with notepad and I have it open in the browser. Let's say I want to put the word really great time of the year here. So I'll edit it, save it, and then just hit refresh in the browser. And it shows a new version of it. All right, so you switch back and forth. Yes? Uh, they, they, they can be uploaded, uh, they can be uploaded to a Dropbox. Uh, you can't send them via email, via LC email, all right, uh, unless they've changed something since I last checked. Um, you know, um, if, if you try to send a zip file via LC email, it will give you an error. Uh, and there's ways around that, but, um, as far as uploading an assignment, uh, to Canvas, uh, uh, Dropbox, you should be able to, to upload a zip file. All right. If you have trouble with that, let me know and, and we'll take a look. Um, it could have been the way he had Canvas configured, or it could have been his preference. Uh, I've had no problems getting zip files from students in Canvas. All right. Okay. So, Let's talk about, and again, here's what we have as far as tags go. Just to review, tags look like this. They start with the greater than, I'm sorry, less than symbol, and they end with the greater than symbol. Between the two is the name of the tag, all right? In this case, this is the H1 tag. And these are predefined. It's, I didn't make up these tags. The browser knows what these tags mean, and therefore displays it uh, correctly. In the case of an H1, it is a top level heading. So if you are making an outline of the material on this web page, this would be the top level heading. H2s are secondary level headings. So if you're making an outline, this would be indented underneath the heading one. And then you could have H3s, H4, H5, and H6. Now, when I say you can have to H6, I don't mean that you can only have six headings. You have six levels of headings. You can have as many of each of the individual levels as is appropriate. You could have two top level headings. Let's say, for example, we had after fall, we had winter. So I could have that as an H1 as well, in which case that's the top level of a section, falls the top level of a section, and so on. A lot of times when I do the examples, I'll just put in some filler text because I don't necessarily want to sit here typing actual paragraphs here. And we'll look, at, we'll look at another way to do this in, in a couple minutes. Right now, we're just going to use blah, 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 blah. Now, if I were to view this, again, I save it and refresh. And again, you can see that this is a top level heading as well as this because they're the biggest things. This is a little bit smaller, so logically, that is sort of a subheading underneath this main heading and so on. So it's not as though you can only have six headings, you have six levels of headings. And if you think about it, six levels of headings is fairly detailed, is fair, it goes fairly deep, and you probably will never, ever need to go below 
uh, more than six levels of headings. Um, so the fact that there's only six levels of headings isn't really a problem. Okay. So the tags indicate what the text means, what the text really represents. So this is a headline. This is a headline. What's more is a top level headline. Tags come in pairs. All right? Keep in mind I'm going to make some blanket statements, like tags come in pairs. Oftentimes there are exceptions. But I don't want to confuse you by talking about all the different exceptions and variations and so far yet right here on the first couple of days. So if I say something like tags come in pairs, you might know from previous experience or whatever cases where there aren't pairs of tags. That's OK. Just let it slide. This is one of them like most of the time. So anytime I make a statement, since there's always exceptions, you can sort of mentally insert the phrase most of the time, tags come in pairs. Okay? And the tag sort of goes around um, the content that has a specific meaning. So for example, this tells you where the, con where the heading starts. This tag tells you where the content ends. And it is with a slash h1. The slash and then the name of the tag represents the ending tag. So here's the start tag, here's the ending tag. Everything between it is going to be treated by the browser like a top level heading. So if I put the H1 here, the browser displays it like that because I said the headline ended after the word great. So everything after that is considered to just be regular plain old text. So the tag sort of goes around the thing that has a special meaning. Just like if you highlight in the book, where you start to highlight it means it's important, where you end the highlight means that's the end of the important stuff. Let's go in and fill in the rest of the tags that you would have on a page. The first thing that's on a page is not really a tag. It's like a tag. It's similar to a tag, but it's a little bit different. It's called a declaration. Specifically, it's called a doc type uh, declaration. It gives the browser an idea about what language and what version of the language you're using. And it will look exactly like this. All right? Doc type HTML. That simply tells the browser we're using HTML5. So it's like identifying it. There are different versions of HTML, and different versions have slight variations, and so on and so forth. It's important that you identify, you tell the browser what version of HTML you're using, because that will help it do a good job displaying your page. So always have the doc type on your page. All right? Second thing that you're going to have on every page is you're going to have an HTML tag. The HTML tag, again, tells the browser everything between here and here is HTML code. Because remember, the start tag starts the tag and says where the special meaning starts. The end tag is the ending of it. So this is simply telling the browser, hey, my whole page is HTML. You can almost think of this as like an envelope that you're putting your web page in and everything in the envelope is your web page. All right? Web pages, yes? No, that's not true. 
All right, we'll get to what happens when you break the rules in a couple minutes. Because the results when you break the rules are unpredictable. It really depends on which, what, what you actually did. All right, it's kind of like autocorrect when you send a message, right? If you send a message and you want to say, I'm going to the store, and uh, instead of store, it recreates, uh, you know, it autocorrects it to, to stork, all right, for example. The person that gets it might figure out, oh, they, you know, the phone autocorrected it from store to store. Or the person might not get it. Browsers, in a way, are, are the same way. If you break the rule and you put your tags in incorrectly, the browser might kind of figure out what you wanted to do and display it. Or the browser might have no idea what you wanted to do and give you something that isn't correct. So when you, when you don't follow the rules, sort of all bets are off. Sometimes it will work out just fine, and you won't even notice a difference. Other times, the whole page won't display. So it's just, it's just sort of a, a crapshoot. Web pages are comprised of two sections, a head and a body. Now, I'm going to do something. I'm going to indent some of these tags. And I indent to show what tags are inside of what other tags. And this is important. Thank you. Because the indentation shows what tags belong together. In this example, all of these tags are inside of the body tag. That's called nested. All right? So all of these tags are part of the body tag. You can actually put tags inside of other tags. All right? Um, it's just like those Russian dolls, Russian nesting dolls, where you have a big doll, and then inside that you got a smaller doll until you get a tiny doll. All right? Same idea. These tags are nested. What do I mean by nested? It means that they start and end inside of a tag. So the body tag goes from here to here. Start body, end body. This H1 tag starts here, which is inside of the body tag. Between the, when I say inside, I mean between the start and the end. And the ending tag is also inside the body tag. So that's called nested. That's properly nested. Sort of the rule for something being properly nested is that if a tag starts inside a tag, it also ends inside that tag. So, if I were to do this, that is not correct. Can you see why? The H1 starts inside the body tag, but it ends within the paragraph tag. That's not correct. A tag needs to start and end within the same tag. So if it starts within the body tag, it needs to end, not between any other tag, but in the body tag. Another way to say it is that tags won't overlap. All right. If I were to print this out on a sheet of paper, I could draw a line from the start tag to the end tag without going through another tag. Whereas if this was down here, I would cross. Actually, that would be correct. It wouldn't be good, but it would be correct. 
If I would do this, there would be no way I could draw the lines without the lines crossing. That means that they're not nested correctly. Yes? Sorry, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that's a great question. The uh, indentation is just for personal organization. All right. Um, you know, if you you know you've seen me two days uh, in class so far. Uh, my hair's always a mess. All right. My clothes sometimes match, sometimes don't. You know, I don't. You know, I'm not like a super neat person. If you look inside my bag, you see chaos. You know, and all that. So I'm not a neat person in ordinary life. If you go to my office, I have not unpacked boxes from last winter, all right? So I'm not a neat person, but my code, I make a point to be very, very, very neat. Why? Because it makes it easier to go back and change the code later. You can, I can see at a glance. I can take my glasses off, and I can barely read anything on the screen, yet I can see that this tag up here is nested inside that tag there, all right? So it's just for you going back, because an important thing in any kind of software development, whether you're talking about web development, or programming in C Sharp, or Java, or whatever, is to make your code readable, so that at a glance you can see what's going on and get your head around it. Now, especially when we get into more involved web pages, with a whole bunch of tags and so on, if your code is not indented, it can be very difficult to follow what's going on, especially if you were to put it down and come back to it a month later or six months later or whatever. Because keep in mind, you develop a web page, you put it up on the web server, it's working. Well, it might be three months before you look at that page again as a web developer. And they might say, we want this kind of change. Well, you want to make it easy to change it, all right? So one of the ways you can make it easy to change it is to uh, do things like properly indent. The other thing is white space. What I mean by white space is I mean blank space on the page. Like this is white space. This is white space. This is white space. The browser ignores anything more than a single white space. So for example, I could put each one of these blahs on its own line, all right, and space it out how, <coughs> excuse me, however I want to put tabs between them. That makes no difference in the way the page displays. All right, no difference. All right, all the blahs appear on a single line. So any extra space gets changed by the browser into a single space. So I could, if I have extra lines, if I have extra blank lines in here, gets ignored by the browser and displayed as a single space. So what do you do then? Well, you display it in the way that you think is best organized, that makes it more readable for you. And that will involve indenting, breaking things down into multiple lines, and so on. The reverse is true. I could put all this stuff on one line, the whole paragraph on one line, and the browser would automatically turn it into, would automatically wrap it at the, at the end of the line. And as you adjust the browser size, it will, it will wrap it a different way. There's one more tag that should be on every page, and that's the title tag. Now this gets to be a little confusing, because sometimes people confuse the title tag with like the first H1. The title tag doesn't appear within the body of the web page. What do I mean by the body of the web page? I mean everything in sort of the big white space here. So the title doesn't appear here or here or anywhere on the page. The title appears up here on the title bar of the page. 
So if I put in as a title, first example, if you look, when I save this and look at it, you're not going to see first example appear in the body of the page. You're going to see first example appear up on the title bar. All right. Actually, not on the title bar, but on the title tab. So it doesn't appear on the body of the page. It appears in the tab. And it will also appear if I, like, put my, brow, put my uh, mouse over it uh, on the taskbar so you can see what window is open. So this is a basic shell of the web page. Let me cut this out for now so we can look at the shell. Every web page should at least have this stuff in it. A doc type, the HTML tag, which goes around all of the HTML code. The head section, which should at least contain a title. And then a body section, where the actual stuff that's going to display on the page is going to occur. All right. The browser ignores extra white space, which is frustrating at first, but as you get used to it, you actually see it's a good idea. All right, I remember when I was first learning web stuff, it's like, I want to put extra spaces there. Why doesn't that work? There's other ways to put extra spaces there that are better. All right? It's nice that the browser ignores those, because that allows you to format the code in the most readable way. Um, that will allow you to go back and change it more easily. Tags come in pairs, and tags should be properly nested. That is, if a tag starts in a, in a tag, it should end in a tag. Now, what happens if you break some of these rules? I'm going to break some of these rules, and we'll see the result. And the message that you get from this should be that if you break the rules, you don't know what's going to happen. The browser's going to do its best to display the web page. And the browser might get it right, or the browser might get it wrong. The browser, browser might get it a little bit wrong, or the browser might really get it wrong. All, right? All depending on exactly what rule you break. So if I were to get rid of this H1 tag, I specify a heading, but I don't specify where the heading ends. Let's see what happens. To be honest, I don't remember from semester to semester exactly what happens either in all these cases. So I got rid of the end h1 tag. What did it do? Turn the paragraph as the h1. So what the browser did, I'm going I'm to like try to imitate the thought process that the browser went through. Not that the browser is a person that thinks, all right, but there's, there's logic built into it. The browser said, all right, the heading starts here. It's a top-level heading. Where does the heading end? I haven't reached the end heading tag yet. So it includes all this in the top-level heading. Then when it hits the H2, it says, OK, here's another heading. I'll display that. So it assumes that the heading doesn't end until the next heading starts. So therefore, by missing the end tag, it includes stuff as part of the tag that you didn't really want as part of the tag. What if I get the end heading tag wrong? I typo. And instead of h1, I type hh1. Same thing, because the browser looks and says, well, there's an end and, and HH1. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to ignore it. Sort of the nice thing about a browser is if it doesn't know about a tag, it just ignores it, all right? Um, there's, there's some nice aspects to that. Like if new tags are introduced and old browsers don't know what to do, at least it doesn't blow up the page, it just ignores it. 
or if you make an error and put a wrong tag in. In fact, if I put in a start HH1 tag and an end HH1 tag, it doesn't know what to do, so it treats it just like it's plain text, because there is no such thing as an HH1 tag. There's an H1 tag. Now, if I were to put this tag end tag here, I've broken the rules of proper nesting because the paragraph tag contains the end H1 and the body tag contains the start H1. So that's not nested correctly. But if I were to look at this, guess what? It pretty much works. All right? So the browser sort of figured out what it needed to do, even though you broke the rules of the language. So that's why I'm saying that it really, um, you know, when you break the rules of the language, it might work, it might not work. All right? Is text treated as a paragraph then? More or less, yes. Plain text. What, what appears in a paragraph is plain text, and if it's something is not inside a tag or inside a uh, unidentifiable tag, it's just treated as plain text. Okay. All right. You want to hit your button again? Okay. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Right. Now, once puts it on you, and then when you're done, you, yeah, you hit it again, and it takes it off. Now, here's a classic error that, like, you know, one student will make at least sometime this semester. What if I forget the end title tag? Innocent enough of a problem, right? I, you know, was having a bad day, and I forgot the end title tag. I save it. I look at it. My entire page disappeared, all right? And at that point, there's usually panic, like, you know, oh, what happened? My page is gone, you know. Um, really, the problem is, and you can probably even figure it out, we told the browser where the title started, but we didn't tell it where the title ended. Therefore, it considers everything as part of the title. So if we even look at this, notice the title shows some of the tags because it doesn't know where the title ends. All right. There's a couple good lessons to this. Number one is that ignoring the rules, just because you can get away with not following the rules sometimes, ignoring the rules can lead to bad consequences. And secondly, don't panic. All right. If something displays horribly, that doesn't mean that you have a horrible problem in your code. Uh, oftentimes, a simple problem can cause big consequences, and all you have to do is fix it. So if I go and add that back in, I'm back in business. By the same token, if I were to spell title wrong, the result will sort of be the same, all right? And it will, um, it will not know the end of the title, and therefore it will not end the title, and therefore you won't see anything on the page. What if I do this? What if I misspell the start title tag? put it as part of the page, getting back to what you said, it doesn't know the title EE tag, and therefore it treats it just like a paragraph. Yes? What was the significance between uh, head and title again? The head and title? The head, later on, we're going to put a bunch of stuff in the head tag. The title is one of those things. That's the first thing that we're learning. Okay. So the title 
is what appears here on the tab. So that's the title tag. The title tag appears in the head tag, and later on, we're going to put some other stuff in the head tag as well. Okay. So the head is sort of like larger than the title. Yes? Is that to help the browser like locate the pages? Uh, it, it's for a lot of different things. Am you I could to push this again? Uh, yes. OK. Yeah, it's for a lot of things. It's for later on when we get into CSS. We'll put our CSS code in there. We can put uh, terms in there, keywords, to help search engine optimization. We can put JavaScript code in there to add functionality to the page. So we're going to put a lot of stuff in there, but none of it is the stuff that's going to appear over here on, uh, on the page. It's all stuff about the page, not the content of the page itself. All the content of the page appears in the, uh, the, the body. So we could even do this, but it's a violation of the rules. We could put the H1 up here in the head section, and this is one of the errors that the browser figures out. But we still don't want to do it that way. All right. Those are tags in a nutshell. All right. So we're done. All right. The rest of the 14 weeks you can have off. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, what are we going to learn then? What are we going to go from here? Because I've told you 90% of everything about tags that exists. There's one more thing, there's one more big thing called properties. And we'll get to that maybe today, maybe um, Monday. All right? Uh, and then there's just a whole bunch of other tags that we're going to learn. We're also going to learn CSS that deals with formatting. Because everyone's first assignment is going to look like this. White background, Times New Roman font, Headers are going to be this big, H1s are going to be this big, H2s are going to be that big. Well, if you look on the web, not every page looks like this. Actually, if you went and looked at the web in, I don't know, 1996, most, many of the pages did look like this. All right? But today, pages don't look anything like this. And it's not because there's any different HTML in them. It's that the styling and the formatting was done via CSS. Could you actually take this Word document, take a Word document, put colors and things on it, and then cut and paste into a notepad document, creating HTML? Would it show the colors? Um, that's a good question. Um, I believe Word is sophisticated enough that if you copied it, it would do some sort of conversion. That, but that's something you wouldn't want to count on. All right? And you wouldn't want to count on that for a couple reasons. First of all, it's liable to do it wrong. Secondly, it's liable to do it in a very heavy-handed brute force way. All right? That's one reason why we only use Notepad in this course for developing web pages, Notepad or Notepad++. Or we use what's called a simple text editor. Because we really want to learn how to do it and how to do it in a good way. And what do I mean by a good way? Uh, most of the time in software development or web development, when, I, when I'm saying uh, we want to do it in a good way, I mean we want to do it in a way where it's easy to make changes. That's what good means most of the time in software or web development. That Pardon me? Not necessarily the intended use, but for example, I don't want to have to go back and change the color on every single page. All right, let's say I have a website with 100 pages on it. And let's say I did what you described. It's liable to do it in a very brute force way, which means that if I wanted to change the color, it would have to go and ch I'd have to go and change each one of the 100 pages individually. 
we want to develop things in a good way, which means that we want to make it so that if we want to change the color of the entire site, we only have to make that change in one place. So us as web developers, we, we're going to do a better job than a brute force mechanical copy and paste and let it do some sort of conversion that we don't completely understand. It's going to do it in the most straightforward way possible, which is a brute force way. It's sort of like the difference between uh, solving a story problem by just guessing numbers and plugging them in and solving a story problem by actually doing algebra, right? We're smart enough to understand the principles of good web development so that we can write our code in a way that is easy for us to make changes to it. All right? Whereas sort of that kind of process is going to do it in the most brute force, how do I want to say it, time consuming way possible. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that via CSS. It won't be a tag necessarily, but we'll have CSS code that goes in and says, hey, every header on the site, we want this color. Every header on the site, we want this font. And we want this, uh, this uh, font size and so on. So we'll probably get into CSS a little bit next week. All right? Uh, but until then, um, yeah, um, you could do it, but it's probably not a good way. By the same token, tools like Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver, if you know what you're doing, you can develop good code using Dreamweaver. But if you don't, it sort of takes you down the path of least resistance, which is sort of a brute force way of creating a page. All right? So it's kind of like using a power tool, right? Or, or, well, I don't know how to use power tools, so that's a bad example. All right? It's kind of like using a calculator to do addition, right? When you're learning addition, it's better for you to add by hand, because then you'll really learn how to do it, and you'll learn when to do it, right? If they just gave students a calculator and didn't even teach them how to do math, they're liable to say, instead of addition, they're liable to multiply or divide or subtract or whatever, and you'll get all kinds of answers. When you know how to do something, it's good then to use a tool to make it more efficient. But until you know how to do it your, by yourself, it's better not to use a tool. It's better to go through the process of coding it by hand. All right. OK, let's study one more tag, or maybe two or maybe three more tags. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to create a list. All right. And we're going to create a list under fall sports. All right. Now, what are exam what are some fall sports? Football's a fall sport. Is soccer a fall sport? Okay, sure. It is now if it isn't. Uh, what else is a fall sport? Tennis? Sure. Pardon me? Right. E yeah, exactly. All right. So, Let's say I want a list of these things on my page. So I'm going to try to create a list. Hint, it's not going to work. All right? So let's put these in and... All right. If I were to save this, so I'm going to go save it. If I'm going to view it in the browser, what's it going to look like? It's going to look like plain text. Is it going to be listed in a nice list like this? No. Why not? Because that extra white space gets ignored. So it's simply going to be football right next to it, soccer, right next to it, tennis, right next to it, cross country. So let's, ver let's see if I'm right. I saved it. Sure enough, we're right. Well, how do we make it? What if we wanted that to be a list where it was stacked up on top of each other? Uh, Specifically, what if we wanted it to be a bulleted point list? All right. Well, anytime the question is, is like, how do I make something that's just some text into a list? We're changing the meaning of it. In other words, these aren't just random words. This isn't a paragraph. This is a list. So there's a tag to set the meaning of a particular piece of code. So the tag, there's actually 
three tags that we're going to use for lists. Um, one of them is to create what's called an unordered list. An unordered list, another name for it, is a bulleted list. And there's two tags associated with a unordered list. The UL tag for unordered list. And the LI tag, which stands for list item. An unordered list is a list where the order doesn't really mean anything. In other words, what order did I type those in? I type those in in the order that they popped into my head. <laughs> All right? So it doesn't really matter the order. The unordered list goes around the whole list. The list consists of four list items. This is the start of one list item. This is, or this is one list item. This is a second list item, a third, and a fourth. And if I do that and view it in the browser, I'll get a bulleted list like that. White space still doesn't matter. So I could do this if I wanted to. I can actually put all these on the same line. And the browser figures it out. See? Now, why would I not do that? Because that's going to be really hard to read. If you had a list of 100 items, let's say, and they were all on the same line, it's going to be very difficult to read. So I'm going to format it in a way that makes it easy for me to read. If it's easy to read, it's going to be easy to change, is sort of the theory behind that. All right, doesn't matter to the browser. We might as well make it easy on ourselves if we have to come in. If someone were to say, go put something between soccer and tennis, we could go and we could easily add it in like this. Yes? Uh, would the bullet point list uh, still show up if you just put uh, LI before? Okay. That's a, good, that's a real good question. Let's see. This is, strictly speaking, breaking the rules. All right. But let's see what happens. Interestingly enough, no, it doesn't. Again, that gets back to the original thought that when you break the rules, the browser guesses. And it might guess better, it might guess incorrectly. Now, the other kind of list is an ordered list. That would be like if I had statistics. If, let's say, I, you know, I was looking at what are the most popular sports among high school students. What are the most popular fall high school sports? All right? And I actually had statistics that so many hundred thousand of students in Ohio played football, so many played soccer, so many played tennis. And I was actually really ranking them based on some real basis and not just the order that I thought of them. Then I can, instead of a UL, it's going to be an OL. And then that's going to show numbers instead of that. Did you notice what happened? You know what's great about my job? I just made a mistake. But I've taught long enough that I can pretend like I made the mistake on purpose. And I can say, I cleverly made a mistake on purpose to test your troubleshooting skills. If you notice, winter can be tough but beautiful moved over. What do you think is wrong? Yes. Exactly. I put an OL at the end instead of an endOL. So it sort of thinks I got another list. And it really doesn't know what to do. And it kind of thinks that this is part of that list. All right? 
So it doesn't really know exactly what to do, but it does, it, it makes a mistake. It, it messes up my page. So this is a classic example of if you don't follow the rules, you don't know what you get, really. This is like not horrible, but it's also not good. And I, but I can certainly fix it by putting in the end ol tag, in which case everything's back the way it should be. I'm going to change this back to an unordered list because this really is an unordered list. I don't have any statistics or anything. It's just the order that I happen to think of them. Okay. Next week, Monday will probably be more tags. And we'll talk about the one other part of tags that we haven't hit, and that is properties. None of these tags have properties. We'll also talk about the difference between a inline and block tag. All of the tags that we've looked at today are block tags. There's another kind of tag as well. Probably Wednesday of next week, we will start talking about CSS so that all our pages won't look identical. All right? Yes? First assignment is due, uh, I believe, Wednesday of next week. Yeah. All right. You said there were three tags for a list. Yes. And we covered two. We uh, will cover we, the other one. We did all three of them. Okay. There, there is UL, OL, and LI. Oh, okay. Yeah, the LI belongs to either a OL or a UL. Okay. Right. Okay, we'll see you up in LAM.